Hello, I'm going to look at a couple of books today which don't really share a connection, uh, other than that I read them. Um, the first of them is a non-fiction book, Hans and Rudolph by Thomas Harding. Thomas Harding was at the funeral of his great uncle, Hans Alexander, uh, when amongst the stories that he heard and the eulogies um, was one that said that his relative may have been responsible for hunting down and capturing the commandant of Auschwitz, Rudolf Hoss. He'd never heard this previously and he didn't know whether it was true or not, so he set about researching and this book is the result of those researches. Um, it was true and Hans Alexander began life in Germany before moving over to England and then he became part of the war crimes investigation unit which was charged with hunting down and capturing high-ranking Nazis after the end of the Second World War. Uh, in order to tell that story uh, Harding obviously has to look at the wider German history of that period and if you have studied that at all, as I did at A-level, um, my one frustration with this book was that there were big, sort of, it's sort of a bit of a potted history as you go along and if you already know that, that can be slightly frustrating. It's always of course the personal details which make this story most fascinating. So looking at Hans Alexander's life in Germany, that of his father, how this family built up a practice and of course how many families like them were forced to make the decision as to whether to stay in Germany with the rise of the Nazis or to move out and how difficult that was. That's fascinating and equally fascinating of course the story of Rudolf Hoss, how a man becomes part of the Nazi party and ends up becoming commandant of a place like Auschwitz but also how that chimes with his personal life, being uh, a father to children and, and how those two things square up. Um, the banality of evil, it was called when I was studying history, and it, it, it's fascinating to read about it. Um, the book really picks up pace in the second half when you get to the sort of the real hunting down of Rudolf Hoss, and it almost feels like a thriller at those points. If that section had occupied more of the book, I think I would have got through it a, a little bit quicker. Um, as I say, slightly frustrating read at times, but a really interesting story and an important one too, of course. Then we move on to a novel. Familiar by J. Robert Lennon. Um, I was in a real proper reading funk. I could not get through anything, I couldn't connect to anything that I was reading, and I turned to this book because I had read a book of his previously, um, Pieces for the Left Hand, which is a collection of stories which I loved. It's a really, really fantastic book. Uh, and this is a slightly shorter novel by uh, J. Robert Lennon I thought would be a safe bet. Uh, I was right, it's fantastic, and it's properly cured me of my reading funk, so thank you. Um, the simplest way to describe it is a woman is driving back from having visited the grave of her son and while she's driving she sort of focuses her eyes on a little crack in the windshield and she does that thing that we often do when we're driving where she sort of zones out slightly and when she comes to again she is still driving along the highway but things have changed subtly or not so subtly she's driving a different car Everything sounds different. She appears to be about £10 heavier than she was. She is the same woman, as you can see from a, a name tag, but things are different. She seems to be working a different job. She's married to the same man with the same name, but he's slightly different. And her life is the same, but different. And that's where this word familiar comes from. Um, there are some crucial differences, and probably most importantly with this book, her son in this new life is not dead. And... That allows Lennon to look at all sorts of fascinating things, ideas about memory, identity, um, parenting, familial conflict. Um, there's even a lot of humour in it. Um, she's able to assume this new persona, this new life, this new job, without anybody really noticing that she doesn't know what's going on, apart from her husband who's baffled by the, the difference in her, but she's able to learn this new job within a matter of a few days, which is very funny to, to watch unfolding. It's, it doesn't maintain its humour, it, it gets fantastically dark, uh, particularly towards the end. But mainly it's the kind of book that you read that really makes your brain sort of tick along. There's so many fascinating ideas in there. I found it very, very stimulating to read, and as I say, it's properly cured me of my reading funk, so I'm eager to get reading more books. So, hugely recommended, as I say, Thank you again for curing me. Um, and it means that there will be some more book reviews hopefully coming soon. Thank you for listening to these ones.